Hello everybody, welcome to Scribbles with Jonathan. I'm your host, Jonathan Rector. You can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. If you guys are on Twitter, feel by, or feel free to uh, follow me there, at Art by Jar. Uh, all that stuff is in the underbar there for the links and stuff. So, what are, what are we going to do today? Uh, I just wanted to make a very quick video of this. I, I think this is absolutely excellent. Um, I'm going to show you something cool in a, in a program called Manga Studio, and a lot of this content that I'm about to show you, I've learned from watching other YouTube videos. And uh, for some of you guys and gals, uh, this this is probably you know the same information. Uh, but I do know, as the beauty of the internet works, some people aren't aware of this. So I just wanted to share what I've stumbled upon and uh, throw it at you guys. And um, so yeah, this this is Manga Studio. Uh, it it isn't Photoshop. I'm I'm usually a Photoshop guy when I like to do my digital work uh, for comics, especially. Um, but I'm starting to lean more more towards Manga Studio. There's some things I'm not quite comfortable yet making the, the total switch. So I'm gonna try doing things in a slower you know slower fashion. But as I start to learn more things, I, I'm I'm feeling I'm gonna probably do more videos for you guys. Um, so I'm gonna to do today in this video is show you guys uh, up here. Uh, and, and I apologize if I stumble a little bit during this because, uh, like I said, I'm just getting into this and uh, <laughs> there's so much new things here as opposed to Photoshop, uh, so it's, it's a little different. Uh, I'm going to be showing you guys this stuff here, the new special ruler. And I should point out that this is in the Mango Studio EX. I believe this is uh, number four. And some of the things may be a little different in the previous versions. I, I'm not totally sure, but I just wanted to put that out there. And so what I'm going to show you, what's really cool about this is that anybody that's used Photoshop, um, if anybody has used rulers or guides, and then you could lock the guides to make your panels and things like this, uh, it's very similar, except in this sense, you can literally do perspective on the fly. And it sounds awesome. And a good buddy of mine, Josh Bowman, uh, you can check out his webcomic, caffeinatedtoothpaste.com, in the link as well. Uh, we had a little discussion, eh, kind of back and forth, about uh, Manga Studio. And, and one cool thing about the perspective thing that he brought up is it doesn't teach you perspective it just helps you with it and I totally agree and I'm gonna show you guys that so what we got here is let's say this is a three panel uh, three page comic book it's totally random uh, in this first panel we're gonna do uh, one point perspective of just a hallway and then the second one we're gonna have this runaway train kind of this is a two point perspective and, well arguably it could be three I kinda made it a little bit more dynamic I guess than it should be but we'll try to fix that and then this one here would be a three-point perspective kinda like as if um, <clears throat> we were falling from an airplane into the city or the, the most normal thing most people would say you know in a bird's eye view is you're either a bird flying over a city or you're Superman so what you wanna do is sketch it out and if you don't understand perspective totally uh, this will be a little bit more for you to gain or grab a hold of but um Let's just zoom in here. So we're going to do the first panel here. And what we're going to want to do is, at least this is the way I do it. I'm sure there's a little bit quicker way. I click New Layer. And this awesome window is going to pop up. And I'm just going to put Panel 1, just so I remember here. And under the Layer Type, change it from Raster Layer or whatever else you have to, doo -doo -doo, where is it here? Uh, right there, ruler, ruler Layer. So I'm going to click Ruler Layer. All these other things block out. Click OK. And now right here, under Ruler, Panel 1, we have it there. And what it's done is it made a special layer as opposed to this image stuff here. So it's just made a ruler layer. So if I go up to here to ruler and I go new special ruler, we're going to go one point perspective. And as you can see, it's got like these little, <clears throat> let me just zoom out so you can see a little bit better. Uh, it kind of looks like a compass in a way, you know, it's got this, this, this uh, straight line here is your horizon line. And then up here, some people like to call it the up and down lines, like your plumb line, kind of like if you're holding a string with a weight attached to it, uh, how it would, how gravity would pull it, that'd be your plumb line. So all the other up and down lines have to match that. So what you do is now you have this, and, and I usually get this wrong. I click this object selector tool, and I believe there's some alt keys you can click, and I, and I believe this is the right one. Yep, yeah, okay. So what you're going to want to do is you just click it and move it to where it should be in the image. <clears throat> and you can rotate these lines. I'm going to keep it simple just for the point of this. Uh, so if you've studied uh, perspective, you understand how the horizon line works. Um, usually it's where your eye would be if you're standing in the scene. Again, for simplicity, we're going to toss it there. And uh, what this line here, you can kind of see this green line. I don't know if I zoom in or if it'll show up a little bit better. There you go. This green line essentially is your plumb line. So all the lines are going to be up and down towards that. So that looks pretty good. Um, actually, 
I apologize, right here, this top point, you're going to want to have it locked somewhere in here. Uh, this would be your vanishing point. And that green line that was there uh, kind of disappeared, which is a little weird. <laughs> but uh, you can change your plumb line before you move your vanishing point, I'm assuming. And your vanishing point, this is where all your lines are going to go to. So you can move that around. And you can actually click in these little... Uh, individual lines to just kind of move them around to, to line it up with the scene that you have to make sure your vanishing point's correct. Uh, so I think I may even just bring it over here a little now. So I can see right away that my sketch for my perspective was wrong, right? You can see this line going up more. It's much more dramatic than the line I had there. That's okay. It was a sketch and that's the point of this. So we have that and uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to grab my marker tool just so you guys can see it a little bit more clear. I'm going to go into a, a new layer here and I'll actually call this one panel one or panel whatever the hell I wrote there. And what you do up here at the top, uh, it says uh, snap. This enables and disables snap. You're going to want snap on. Snap to ruler. Uh, this sets the snap to the ruler. And snap to perspective ruler. This sets snap to perspective ruler. Okay, so you're going to want to make sure that that one's clicked on. And I'm just going to quickly show you uh, what snapping is going to do. So no matter where my lines go, it's always in the correct perspective that we've already set up. Um, and this gets really awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to redraw this scene now that I have my perspective in there. And it does take some getting used to. Sometimes the lines don't necessarily click in all the time. And uh, okay, so we're gonna have a door here. Da -da. And uh, I like to be a little quick with this. And you can actually do this as many times as you want uh, to get it as tight or as close as you'd like it to. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of overlap on the lines here. Uh, like, let me just zoom in to show you what I'm talking about. You see right here, right there, whoops, uh, <laughs> it snapped there so I can't make a circle. But like right here at the corner, it looks like it's like, popping out a little bit. Uh, you're going to have to do a little bit of cleanup work there. Um, okay, so if, just say I wanted to make it the doorknob there. Uh, all you would do is click that uh, snap to perspective off and you just knock in a, a cheesy little door handle, click it back on. We're going to make a little welcoming mat. And uh, kind of talking about what uh, Josh was saying uh, in the beginning there that I noted that he said, uh, if you don't know perspective, this isn't going to make you uh, know it. I do think it will help you understand it a little bit better. And uh, so if you're a little afraid of perspective or a little scared of what it does or, you know, just getting getting into it, uh, you can definitely just try this out. Um, this is, again, like I said, only in the EX version, and the EX version is, I believe it's 300 or 400 bucks. It's pretty expensive, but with a tool like that, you guys just saw how quickly I just did a perspective, right? Uh, I'm going to turn off the sketch layer, I'll turn off that ruler layer, and bang, there you go, you've got it. That's done. You know, it needs some work, it looks very boring, but the principle's there, right? Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete that layer. Um, you could totally make more layers. Uh, so I'm going to do it again. I'll call this one panel two. Whoops, whoops, my bad. Actually, that's fine. We'll leave that there. I'll make another layer called panel two. I can't spell today. And we're going to click there. We're going to go to uh, ruler layer. Okay. And <clears throat> we're going to have two points. So we're going to go back up here again. Remember, ruler, new special ruler, two point perspective. Now it's looking a little bit different than it did before. So for certain to understand it, that green line is our plumb line. And uh, what I'm going to do, actually, just to spice it up, I want to see if I can rotate this. I believe I can. I'm not sure if I can zoom out even further. No. Um, how would we rotate this? Transform, maybe? No. Uh, okay, well, I know there's a way to actually rotate this so everything's not exactly up and down. Um, but for the sake of what's going on, we're just going to forget it. We're going to keep it nice and boring. Okay, so what you're going to want to do again is get your horizon line. Uh, we'll say the horizon line's there. It looks good. And, whoops, that was the horizon line. I want the horizon line low. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab our perspective guides here and essentially just try to make it line up to the idea of what you had. Uh, one of the weird things about perspective is no matter how hard you try, sometimes <laughs> you'll always be wrong. I find anyway. And actually this one's a little too close, so I'm going to move this perspective layer just out just a little bit, just so it doesn't look so crunched. Okay, it looks good. We're going to go in there, 
Beautiful. Click panel two and let's get to work. So go over here, click the marker tool, make sure our, our up here, uh, snap to perspective ruler is on and uh, let's make a train. A choo-choo train. Whoops, 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 whoops. And go down. Now, uh, I did want to say as well, uh, this right here, this, what I'm, what I'm showing you guys, uh, let me just, whoops, turn this off. I just wanted to get some cool lines coming that way. Um, what's really cool about this program, or at least this feature right here, this feature I think is what sold me the most on this program. Um, if you're doing color work, I've had some people ask me about that. Uh, I, I'm not too sure. I haven't messed around with the color. I, I'm still, you know, like I said, into Photoshop. Uh, I do do a lot of coloring in Photoshop as opposed to in uh, Manga Studio. Uh, but I've seen some people do some pretty wild and amazing things. So I, I don't want to make it sound like uh, it can't do coloring because uh, I know it can. Uh, I don't even know what I'm doing here. I'm trying to add some. Actually, here we'll do this. We'll make some buildings in the background just to make it pop a little bit. Um, but the debut version of this program, and I'm not trying to sell it or anything, is uh, 40 or 50 bucks, which is pretty reasonable. Uh, you'll still be able to do everything for the most part. You won't be able to do what I'm doing here. But uh, this right here is actually making me consider doing a switch just because of how fast I can do perspective. Uh, it's no longer a hindrance like. I don't know about you guys, but like if I'm doing a superhero scene or something, and they're not in. Uh, actually, the two books I'm doing right now uh, are. It's funny because they're both in. Um, what's it called? Warehouses, and warehouses are. You know, they can be a little bit of a. a, a you know, a, a problem to draw, uh, make you not want to do it. At least for me, I'm not a big fan of doing perspective. Uh, but when I can hammer something out like this that fast. You know, that's a big deal. So this was supposed to be a train. <laughs> and it actually looks really ridiculous that it's not. Um, anyway, we'll put some black there. Just to, Okay, maybe it's a floating train. So you can see all of a sudden now we got a different shot. And what I wanted to do too in this layer is I wanted to show you guys something else that's really awesome. In Photoshop, this actually gives me quite a bit of problems. So I'm going to put uh, speed lines, okay? And again, I'm making a new layer, call it speed lines here, and then I'm going to go to ruler layer, a new ruler layer there, yep. And make sure your the previous layer is off. And with the speed line layer, we're going to go back up to ruler, new special ruler, and this is where it gets really cool. I'm not going to go too much into these other ones for now. Uh, I think I'm running out of time. I didn't even look at the clock. But we're going to want a new radial lines ruler. And the idea here is if you can kind of see it, it looks like a little star. We're going to click that. Uh, it's essentially a one-point perspective, um, but it's pressure sensitive. So I'll show you guys. So we'll say, I don't know, I'm not even going to put it in the right spot. We'll say, you know, in most manga or uh, superhero books, the, 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 the train's just going out of control, right? So I'll make a new layer uh, just so it's not all over overwhelming it. And I'm going to grab a brush. I'm going to just make sure that there's pressure sensitivity turned on. Okay, that's fine. So no matter where I draw, it'll always <clears throat> go to that point. And this right here, my friends, is awesome. I'm a big fan of uh, speed lines. I think a lot of people are, you know. Show some high energy, you know. I could just go crazy with these speed lines, go as little or as heavy as I want, you know. Boom, look at this. Yeah, we're getting some, some nice lines there. So we're going there. And uh, you can even click it into white so I can break up some of this darkness down here just to accentuate some of the stuff that's going on. Crazy, absolutely crazy. Love it. Okay, so very quickly, uh, let me turn that off. Bang, bang. And I'm going to do three-point perspective very quick because I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be running out of time here. So, new layer. Uh, panel three, did it again. New layer. <laughs> panel three. Go down here to raster layer. Click that sucker to ruler layer. There you go. And then we're going to go ruler new special ruler three-point perspective and now things are getting even crazier so the difference between three-point perspective and two-point perspective is your plumb line that up and down line actually changes and you'll see what I'm talking about okay so whenever it's a bird's eye view uh, things tend to the horizon line goes way up here and let me just okay so our every all the lines are going to be coming Good. I'm just gonna 
adjust some of my lines here to make sure that it evens out. Actually, we're going to bring it up just a tad, just to taste. And we'll get these other layers and make sure they're, yeah, those are too close. So I'm going to bring those guys out and I'll bring this one out just so I can see. These little lines are actually very helpful just so you can see what's going on. I'm not going to get too uh, picky with where it's at right now. Uh, panel three, bang, let's do it. Grab the marker and let's do Superman flying through the city. So as you can see, my because I, I didn't really go into uh, the detail of exactly where the perspective was, it is a little all over the place. You can see my perspective's really off. That's okay. So we've got a building up in the foreground here. Whoops. Undo. Go. We've got a building right here. It does take a little bit getting used to because uh, the program does try to force you into a, s a certain perspective. Uh, so sometimes your line won't be totally where you wanted it. So you just got to uh, erase it. And we'll just do some some little fade lines, I guess you could call them down there. And all of the rooftops have to have some sort of roof to them. I'll just quickly toss some roof. So like the point I'm trying to get across here is for anybody that's not working digital, uh, you could totally, I mean, I don't want to make it sound like uh, f the four hundred dollars or three hundred dollars it is for the program is 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 nothing. I mean that's a lot of cash to anybody. Uh, but even if you just do two D work, um, you could totally you know make it eleven by seventeen if you're doing a traditional American style comic. And uh, you know very quickly, you, you, well, you guys are seeing what's going on here, and then you could just print that out and light box it. You know what I mean? You don't have to, no longer do you need to tape all this stuff to the table to get your perspective. You can actually push things a little bit more, you know? Uh, so I'm doing here is I'm just putting, whoops, whoops. I'm just putting some quick guidelines at what you could do after the fact. And I'll actually show you in a second here. You could maybe do some windows on here, right? So I'm going to turn off the sketch layer just so you can see it. And what we'll do here is I'm going to turn down the opacity. And again, uh, you could totally do this uh, and tighten it up, you know? So. We'll do some windows over here. Um, and if you are a digital uh, comic book artist, especially, one thing that really uh, jones me about Manga Studio is that, you know, Manga is comics, you know. And this is a program built around making comics. So a lot of the things uh, that you do in Photoshop to manipulate how things work to make it to comics, much like how I'd, I like to do it, and anybody that's picked up the Freddie Williams Guide to Digitally Drawn Comics by DC Comics, uh, you know, fantastic resources. I mean, th it's all there. Uh, the only problem is the cash, you know? But anyway, do some research. See if this is something that you're into. I'm going to wrap it up, and I hope this showed you guys uh, uh, just something that I thought was really cool, and honestly, one of the biggest, biggest selling points of this program is for me is just the special rulers and really quick to note I'll probably do another video with these speed lines just to show you guys a little bit more is you can actually do radial curves so imagine like Magneto you know like making a fist anybody that used to watch your cartoon and you'd see those the circles radiating out of there you could totally do that and I mean you can do it like that and it's perfect every time phenomenal stuff so anyway thanks for watching you can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com and feel free to follow me on twitter at artbyjar so keep making comics guys keep reading comics take care and we'll talk to you later bye